Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So today I will be discussing my August wrap up. I had a really great month in August. I ended up reading a total, finishing a total of 15 books and I participated in two different readathons. The Enneagram readathon was the first two weeks of August and the Tropical readathon was the whole month. So I did put up a wrap up video after the Enneagram readathon for the first two weeks of August where I discuss the books that I read for the Enneagram Readathon and what how my points fell out and it was a, sort of like a mid-month check-in. I go into like a good amount of detail I think for wrapping up each of those books. So I will link my Enneagram Readathon wrap up up in the cards and down in the description. Uh, I will briefly just list what they are and what my rating is here but if you have any interest in my thoughts on any of those books I strongly encourage you to go check out that video where I discuss them in further detail. So just Real quick, the, uh, I think seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven books that I read for the Enneagram Readathon for the first half of the month are in that wrap up, but they were Check Please, book two, Sticks and Scones by Ngozi Ukazu. This is a male, male, new adult, college sports romance graphic novel. Uh, I thought it was really cute. Uh, I really loved the main characters and I gave it 4.5 stars. Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is a like literary fiction, vague thriller book that I really did not enjoy the writing style or the, or the lack thereof of plot. Uh, I just didn't really enjoy it. I did a book review vlog style uh, on Leave the World Behind, so I will link that up in the cards and down in the description, but I didn't really like it, so two stars. The third book was The Mammoth Hunters by Jean M. Owl. This is the third book in that series, Earth's Children series. Uh, this is a long, long um, sort of literary fiction anthropological drama. I reread it. It's a reread. I read it years ago. I had to listen to this one on audio at 1x because I have the like original audio CDs. Um, I, less, I liked it less on reread and gave it 2.5 stars. Next is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is a opposites attract romance. The main female character is inspired uh, by the Schitt's Creek character, Alexis. Um, I found it really enjoyable. I thought it was kind of sweet, but it was also like spicy and hot. So I really enjoyed it and gave it a 4.5 stars. Chasing Redbird by Sharon Creech. This is a sort of middle grade coming of age older book from the mid to late 90s. And we, it, it deals strongly with themes of grief and coming of age. And this was a reread from my very young youth and I gave it four stars. The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yeros. Uh, this is a romance with like strong historical fiction elements. There are dual plot lines and two points of view. Um, there is sort of, it's contemporary, but also World War II. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, I thought it was spicy and I just like really love the story. I gave this five stars. The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller was the last book that I finished for the Enneagram Readathon. This is a YA fantasy romance with sort of an antagonistic main female character. Uh, I did a whole book review video that was kind of like a rant, so I'll link that up in the cards and down in the description. Uh, I did not particularly enjoy this book. Uh, good premise, not great follow through for me, so two stars. So on the Tropical Readathon board, uh, check please is a graphic novel and those cannot count for the challenges, but it would have counted for sports romance if I could have done so, but I couldn't. So Leave the World Behind counted as a post-apocalyptic. I'm kind of stretching the post, but like whatever, it's like the start of the end of the world. The Mammoth Hunters what counted for a book that was over 500 pages long. It Happened One Summer is a book that was published this year in 2021. Chasing Redbird was a book that was published before the year 2000. The Things We Leave Unfinished is a book that follows multiple points of view and that is the Enneagram Readathon books that I read and how they fit for the Tropical Readathon prompts. So in the second half of the month, I read the rest of my books. A couple of them are mangas, but let's dive right in. So I I read the book The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. Uh, this was a book that was for one of my real life book clubs and I listened to the audio book. Um, this is sort of a historical slash literary fiction book. We have two points of view where we follow 
Alice and Marjorie. Um, it's set in like rural Kentucky in 1937. And the premise is that Alice and Marjorie are both pack horse librarians, meaning they uh, serve this community that's very rural and very spread out over uh, rugged terrain by traveling librarians and mostly being on horseback and, and um, there's a strong element of like promoting literacy and community throughout this book. Um, my frustration was that um, I enjoyed it fine while I was like reading it but also I, I kind of kept wanting it to like pick up a little bit and especially in the latter half this this book actually really becomes sort of like a courtroom drama that I had not really been expecting um, and to some extent while I enjoy the the main characters, I felt like they were kind of caricatures of or like archetypes that were very familiar. And so ultimately, I was frustrated because I felt like the first half of the book really focused on setting up this community and the connection and establishing, you know, like um, the connections between the librarians, both the few librarians who are who are the librarians but also like with the community and I really like those aspects and that was very strong for me but then as the book goes on and we delve more into both Alice and Marjorie's personal dramas I was like less engaged so for me I think this book is just going to be kind of forgettable um as to the specifics and I'd kind of already forgotten about it when I was like doing this wrap up so I just landed on a, a three stars. I honestly can't even remember what my book club really thought about it. Uh the, yeah, they kind of mostly agreed with me. Everyone thought it was like good, but like not amazing. The next book that I finished was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles. This was a book that I remember seeing around a lot, but like I just never got around to reading it. And there is a Lunar Chronicles read along that I decided to jump on board. And I'm actually really glad I read it. This is a YA book. It is a sort of, I'm going to call it a loose retelling of Cinderella. This is a sci-fi setting because Cinderella, our main character, is a cyborg. Um, so this book has has a plague in it, which was, you know, super fun to read about in the year of our Lord 2021. But there were strong uh, political intrigue sort of elements uh, that I was interested, you know, thought was interesting and I hadn't really been expecting. Um, I did think it was a quick read, like it was easy for me to just kind of keep on reading. And I had it, I thought it was kind of a lot of fun to read. I, I did find it a little bit predictable in its characterization and, you know, sort of what was going to happen with the characters. I wanted more world building um, because this is like sci-fi and set in the future and it's set in like new Beijing. So I wanted some like culture in that. I also was frustrated with the second class status of cyborgs which like just didn't really make any sense to me um i am intrigued with the like lunars and like how that element is going to kind of come into play but like for for now i can tell that this was really a setup for the whole series and i've heard that the series gets better and you kind of have to like judge the series as a whole uh so i did think it like functioned well to set up for the series and portray a main character that i think is going to be a strong character throughout the books but um i, I did enjoy the reading experience so ultimately I laid it on a, uh, at first I, when I first finished it, I was thinking about like a four star, but I think that because I found it sort, sort of predictable and some had some of those like world building issues, uh, I'm going to land on a three star final rating. The next three books I want to talk about are the next three books in the Barbarian, Ice Planet Barbarian series, all by Ruby Dixon. So I read the fourth book, Barbarian Mine. This one we follow Harlow and Rook. He is like... A sort of Tarzan figure like he's like a caveman he's feral he's not been raised with the tribe and he like literally like clubs Harlow over the head and takes her back with him and for various reasons they you know have to be together um there's a one-year time jump in this book which I thought was sort of interesting and good for the series as a whole but like I was kind of annoyed with when it actually happened uh, and there was also like a, like a language barrier because Rook is like feral and doesn't have language so that was kind of annoying to have to deal with but it was still very this book this whole series is very strong on consent and like um, pleasure for both parties especially for the women and I just like oh I love that part uh yeah so ultimately I gave this book three stars I didn't really love the time jump and also Harlow has a medical condition that's sort of like 
brought up but then never like really resolved adequately for my satisfaction so this was like a pretty good installation but not my favorite of the series the fifth book is barbarian's prize again by ruby dixon um there is like a, a holiday book or something that's technically book five but i'm counting this one because that seemed to be like an extra um so barbarian's prize follows tiffany and saluk and it's also this like one year later situation and so tiffany is one of the two or two women left human women who, who have not mated or been paired up uh but tiffany does not want to be mated she's afraid of resonating because she was one of the uh women who was uh traumatized on the ship she was raped by the aliens and so she is really struggling with like recovery and ptsd throughout this book so this is a friends to lovers book where Saluk really takes his time to support Tiffany and to to make sure that she feels constantly like safe and um, consent is again a very strong element in this whole series. Um, I I had I'm not a I'm not a like survivor or a therapist but I kind of wondered a couple times is this really like is, Tef is Tiffany's viewpoint really like the healthiest thing to try way to try to recover from this trauma I, I, don't, I don't know I can't really speak to that but it didn't always feel great um and personally I just like didn't want to read that angle for my romance book so I'm I fully appreciate that it's being explored and uh isn't as represented in this series and I think it's completely viable considering it was shown in book one that there were multiple of the human women who were uh violated but like it just wasn't super doing it for me so I had a couple nitpicky things with this book and gave it three stars and the last of the ice planet barbarians that I finished in August was the sixth book barbarians mate by Ruby Dixon the main characters in this book are Josie and Hayden Josie was the like the last girl with Tiffany from the previous book who had yet to be mated and this is supposed to be I guess sort of like an enemies to lovers because Josie and Hayden like do not get along and they are like sort of constantly at odds with each other but um he throughout the whole book like he just immediately as soon as they resonate which happens at the end of the previous book actually um he is just like so committed to Josie and he is just like a yep I'll die for her like especially at the start he's like I might not like Josie that much but like this is my this is my job this is my lot I am lucky to have resonated with somebody and I just like really appreciated that viewpoint that he kind of throughout the course of the book like it both Josie and Hayden it reveals that they have um sort of sad backstories and so I appreciated that both of them found comfort and like ultimately joy in each other. Um, I also thought it was interesting that this was one of the I think the first books that they the main two characters are like trying to fight the resonance. Uh, there's been a little bit of like fighting in the past but it's only been like a couple days that, they, that people hold out. In this book it's much longer than that and we actually start to see the consequences which is something I really appreciated because like I know it's a faded mates trope for the whole series but like it's been one of my major frustrations from the get-go that like how quickly the human women are just like on board with like well I guess this means I love you because we resonated um especially since like the resonance is set up in this series to be a um like a symbol of fertility that like people resonate to each other and that means that they need to have sex to propagate the like the um, species but like that doesn't necessarily mean that like you have to love each other and there's been mentions of like past alien couplings that like they resonated but they weren't happy about it and they like didn't they like got together just to make the baby and then they were like they went their separate ways so I I liked that this book actually tried to have like a discussion and uh, followed a plot where Josie and Hayden kind of fought it for like a reasonable length of time and I thought that was really interesting so this one I honestly if I'm gonna say this which this I'm not even gonna say it, I'm not gonna say it. I was gonna say no I'm gonna say it there was maybe too much sex not something I almost ever say but I, it was definitely spicy but like after they finally get together it was just like like literally happening at every like 30 minutes like they were like walking together and like he was carrying her and then it was like every 30 minutes we better stop and bang and I'm just like really okay sure so I, I did really like this book and I ultimately gave this four stars and I think this pairing might be one of my favorite pairings so far in the series 
I read two volumes of manga digitally this month. It was Yona of the Dawn Volume 2 and Yona of the Dawn Volume 3. These are both by Mizuho Kusanagi and I am enjoying this series. I, I don't really know how to rate individual volumes because volumes of manga so far to me really feel not their own individual books. Like it's important, I think it's important for a book series for each individual title to have its own story arc as well as for the whole series to have a story arc and I'm just like not finding that that is the case for volumes of manga. It really does feel like we're only getting a couple chapters of the story. It's a long continuous thing and we're it, each individual book so volume so far has not really had its own distinct like arc but in these two volumes there's sort of uh, we see the Wind Tribe, there's sort of political machinations happening. They go and try to find this priest who gives them some guidance and lays down a prophecy, uh, which was cool. Like I had not really read like any premises of these books, so I did not really expect this prophecy to happen, but apparently it's not too hard because they've already like accomplished the first of multiple parts and they traveled and went and met this guy and like that was sort of the first part of the prophecy. So that's what happens in volume two and volume three. Um, I don't have a ton to say. I loved the like dramatic haircut moment. I feel like Yona is starting to like come out of her shell and but like we still haven't seen a ton of personality from her. She just still seems like young and sweet and naive and I just want a little bit more from her character and I felt like the story is progressing really quickly for us to only be on volume three when I know there are like at least 30 plus volumes currently and I think it's still being published so I'm like this seems to be happening too quickly but like maybe there will be a lot of more trials and tribulations before the next like tick mark of the prophecy can happen so my overall reading experience so far of Yon of the Dawn is like a four like I'm enjoying it but it's not a story that I, I'm like desperate to dive into and just like plow through the rest of the series like I'm just gonna kind of keep plugging away, I guess. And the last book that I finished in August was Gideon the Ninth. This is by Tamsin Muir. Um, I had a lot of complicated feelings about this book. I uh, did a book review vlog wrap up kind of situation that sh should be live on my channel because it should be, you know, should already be live. So check that out. I'll put a link up in the description, up in the cards and down in the description. Uh, but this is a like necromancers, and swordsmen in space there there's a competition element there's you know lgbt sexual tension happening uh that made it all sound really cool but like i was kind of frustrated with the writing of this book i felt like there was a lot of jargon there was a lot of names i was confused it was very dense and sort of like there's not there's a ton of description but like I never really figured out how that all fit into the context of the world building and so I always felt like one step behind as to like what was happening throughout this book so I wanted more explanation I did kind of enjoy the ride but I was still frustrated so I think I ended up with a three star rating for Gideon the Ninth. So for the Tropical Readathon, The Giver of Stars I used for the Buddy Read prompt, Cinder I used for a retelling prompt, The Barbarian Mine fourth book I used for a book that I read in 24 hours, and Barbarian's Prize I used for author pseudonym because Ruby Ruby Dixon is a pseudonym, Barbarian's Mate I used as a audiobook, and for Gideon the Ninth it was a sort of different to me genre. So ultimately for the Tropical Readathon, I did really well. I was able to satisfy all but one of the common challenges for everybody. And the one that I didn't get, uh, I, the one that I didn't get was a reread, which technically both Chasing Redbird and The Mammoth Hunters were rereads for me, but I'd already used those for other prompts and you, you can't double up. Uh, that slash, that prompt, alternate prompt was a time loop, which I really enjoy time loop books. I know I reviewed Una out of order not so well but like I like when time is manipulated and played with in a book so if you have a good recommendation for that leave that down in the comments but uh yeah overall I did really well with the common challenges but for the romance specific challenges I didn't complete any of them um I did it was my intention to read XOXO by Axio but I didn't get around to it I have it checked out from the library and would like to get to it in September uh, and then I did read Check Please 
and I was going to count that as a sports romance until I realized that graphic novels could count for your page to total and your points, but they couldn't count for challenges. Uh, and I don't really like second chance romances. So, you know, if one of those had happened, if something I read this month had happened to be a second chance romance, I could have counted it for that, but it's not my thing. I don't usually reach for it. So overall, I think I did pretty well for Tropical Readathon. I earned a lot of points for my team and yeah, I think it's funny that I was team romance and I didn't, I pro probably read like only half romance this month just because I was trying to read a little different, uh, differently than I normally do. So I think that variety is important and variety is the spice of life. So if you have read any of these books that I mentioned here, please leave a comment down below with what you thought or any critiques of my commentary, please. Those are always welcome. Don't forget to check out my Enneagram Readathon wrap up where I talked about the first seven books of the month uh, in a lot more detail, uh, which you can find a link in the description. So thank you so much for watching this video and sticking along with me because I know I talked a lot. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this from me and I will see you next time. Bye.